So something a little out of the norm today. We're gonna do a uh, ride and review of my Fatback Rhino FLT. I'm not really into doing these uh, reviews, but we'll give it a go. today so we're just going to take a short loop pretty common loop for the summer especially when it's like 110 to 120 degrees only about an hour ride maybe four or five miles and we got to cut through the gate right here into the gravel pit it's pretty nice they let us ride through here just as long as we're respectable we don't mess with anything but you take this uh, paved path up, you hang a right. It's gone. So this is where you're gonna pick up the Moab and Bart Trail right here. come down it
pretty nice day here in the desert. It is a nice cool 73 degrees. And it's a good time of year to ride. Because as you can see, everything is in bloom. And we'll continue that way for at least another month. Flowers all over the place. Acapillos have flowers. Little beaver tail cactus have flowers. So they say these little fruits are edible. And uh, they're supposed to be pretty good, but I'm not gonna eat one today while I'm out on my ride, just in case. <laughs> Put that back for one of the animals. So this climb is gonna be probably the longest and steepest climb on the whole Moab Trail. If you're heading up going back is fun it's super fast nothing too crazy it's like the only downhill that we have technically it's not much of a downhill ride but it is pretty fun so once you get up to this section coming up moab that's flynn links in right here at the bottom of this. Moab will continue up and cross over to that section where it links up to the BART and you can go down eight ball on the back side of this ridge. You can go up Dos Equis that follows this ridge and then links into high top. All these trails run in this direction they all pretty much dump out down in a wash where there is the Sugarloaf Highway, kind of a sand road that'll take you all the way back out to the west to the parking lot. out at a, a little four-way intersection. You have Doseki Trail heading up the hill. You have the eight ball trail heading down the hill into the wash that will take you all the way out to Steam Shovel and Champagne. Heading west, we have the Bart Trail by Bart's Handlebar sitting up there. You can tell that's it. And it'll take you down and around and back the general same direction that we came. And then you can follow Moab all the way back in the same direction, heading back towards the parking lot. It's about a short five mile loop. Depending on your skill, you could probably do it in 30 minutes to 45 minutes. So it's a good one when you don't have any time. And it's 120 degrees out here in the desert in the afternoon. So originally I was going to head back on Barge Trail, but it seems like I got enough daylight that I can head down the eight ball and kind of uh, take a little wash adventure since I'm riding the five inch tire fatty. I think we'll do that. So this is a pretty fun trail going down, especially if you have suspension. It's a little rowdy. Loose, steep, shell stone. Got some rock in it. What 
I'm riding alone, I kind of uh, throttle it back a little. I don't want to do anything too crazy and stupid while I'm out here. And uh, I don't have anybody to see it happen when I go down. Right here at the end of the eight ball, you can continue up this Jeep track. Follow it all the way out. But we're going to head back down the wash and enjoy all these uh, nice yellow flowers and got some pink flowers on the cactus. It's really green right now. There's a new section of trail right here that you can ride side to the wash. It is right here. But since I'm on the fat tire, I can go wherever I want. And we're just gonna cruise down this. This is the primary reason I bought this bike. Well, uh, so I can go and make my own adventure and go wherever I wanted when our own trails get a little boring as you can see we took the side trail we probably be missing all this nice bloomage I mean, everything is in bloom right now including the desert hackberry. These little guys I have eaten before. They almost taste like a really sweet cherry tomato. I don't recommend eating stuff you don't know what it is, but we give it a little taste. Make sure you don't get sick. And there's a ton on here. Look at that. Pretty soon this place will be overrun with all these purple flowers. All right, so today I thought it'd be a good idea to do a review on my bike. It's a nice day. I think we'll do it down here in this wash. Now I'm no professional YouTuber here or expert on anything at all but when i see some stuff out there uh that i can't even find information on i think it'd be nice for somebody to do at least something at least do some kind of a a review and uh, i think if i do any reviews i'll do it on stuff that nobody is reviewing so at least somebody out there would have some information okay so today i'm riding my full five inch tire fatty it is a Fatback Rhino FLT. I decided to get this bike because I wanted to get into bike packing. And at the same time, I've seen a lot of people starting to ride these fat tire bikes out in the sand dunes and in the desert. And I figured with our kind of terrain, it'd be nice to go do some exploring. Now, back in September of... Uh, 2018 we did a hundred mile bike packing ride from the Grand Canyon to Flagstaff. It was loaded down with an excessive amount of water. I mean this bike in total with pack weight was like 90 pounds. And uh, I was with a couple extra guys didn't know if we would have enough water as it was summer on that route and we didn't have many water resupply spots, but it did phenomenal. We made it three days, but the last day was just too bad. We were stuck in clay and pushing a bike over five miles clogged with mud and everybody was drenched and we had to call it quits. But she did phenomenal. You can see I lost a lot of paint that day. Everything was just 
jammed up in there, clogged. So this bike's been through the war. And even though it is a full rigid, you know, you still have some squish when it comes to those tires. And uh, all of our riding out here is pretty much cross country, so it's no big deal. But it is nice to uh, be able to go through stuff like this and go check things out that maybe you wouldn't normally do on a mountain bike. Now, the only thing I have really changed out on this bike was these handlebars. I wanted the cockpit to feel very similar to my other bike. I wanted them a little wider. They're not quite downhill, but they're, you know, almost cross country. I've changed out these tires, these Maxxis Colossus. They have a little bit more sidewall protection. The original jumbo gyms were nice and light, but out here in this stuff, you can slice the sidewall pretty easy, and that's what happened. I've added a Fox Transfer dropper post, because you gotta have that now. I've changed the seat out to an Aragon Comp Gel. SMC4M. I'm running X Speedo pedals. I run those on all my bikes and I have been for 12 years and they take a beating. I tried some Race Face Atlas pedals and uh, the first day I had them I bunny hopped and blew a hole right through the center shaft in this area on the Race Face and said that was the end of that. So I went back to these guys and they always seem to work. You have a nice amount of grip on this model and if you hit your shin it's not too horrible other than that nothing's been changed this was the mid-grade model they had at the time comes with SRAM GX stuff which works pretty good the only thing I don't like are the shifter levers I really like my shifter levers on my uh, new Shimano XT better but they do the job the bike comes with fat backs, Alaskan edition hubs, which work fine, but I think I might be switching that rear out to an Industry 9 hub, or maybe a Chris King, because once you get used to instant engagement, it's uh, pretty hard to go back. But pretty fun bike. So far, it's been an excellent bike. I've had no issues whatsoever. It rides pretty soft. As you can see, these rear chain stays. You have a little bit of flex in there. There's no cross bracing. So really, you don't need suspension. And I've left it rigid fork because, well, it's a bike packing bike. And uh, it's fun to learn how to ride a little different when you don't have uh, five and a half inches of travel or more. And as you can see, it blends in very nicely to the scenery and the greenery <laughs> so that's my review of my fatback rhino and uh the only other guy i think that might be doing anything with them is uh pat smodgy you can check out his channel he does some really cool stuff him and his wife are uh trials riders and uh you probably see a lot cooler stuff than what i'm showing you so it's time to get out of here get back before the sun goes down Everybody's usually an early riser. I've never been a morning person. And the reason is I really like riding at this time of day. It just looks so nice, especially with the way the light shines off of everything. You get done your ride, take a shower, and go to sleep. So it's kind of nice, you get everything done during the day. Get your hard workout in. And then you can relax. Plus there's nobody out here on these trails, usually. We're 
back on trail, got out of the wash. We're gonna dip down in here and uh, we're gonna hook up with Johnny Walker. So, if we head down part of this Johnny Walker Trail, you look up ahead, you'll see Jeep track, a single track to the right. That will hook into what is Bird Pole. And you can take that to the front yard back to the parking lot. I think since we have some time today, we'll do something a little different. section Johnny Walker bird pole and today we're going to take backyard across to Bart's which is on top of the ridge dips and traverses but for the most part it's pretty flat look off to the right you can see bird pole coming down windy today. I'm heading directly south back into the wind to help push us up. Usually you can fly down this with a minimal amount of ease. Only one little jump. <laughs> So this section of backyard is going to climb and link directly to Bart's Trail. You could go back up to that four-way section that we were at, or you could take a right, take it back south, hit the gravel pit, and back to the parking lot. It makes for a nice five, five and a half mile loop. And when you top out at Backyard, you hit Bart's, and Bart's cuts in and out of this Jeep track. You do have markers, they're kind of subtle. But if you head back up this, cut in and out of the Jeep track, you head back to that four-way that we were at a little while ago. 
but we're gonna head back south southwest down Bart's to the gravel pit. It's not real exciting for downhill, but it's something. You gotta keep your eyes peeled, pick up the tracks. Cut in and out of uh, the Jeep track a lot. right now is running parallel on the hill above us. But it's a little more scenic and it seems to be less ridden. So I took it. trail tops out right here above the gravel pit it's going to be kind of hard to find the trail running through there but if you head in that general direction look for tire tracks we'll pick it up just be uh respectful of uh people's equipment out here don't ride around down in there they allow us to do this and uh it's kind of nice As you can see, sometimes they grade it here, so there is no trail. And if you look ahead, you can always find it. Like right here. bounce out back into the, uh, the gravel area where they spread the stone and asphalt not bad for a short ride today let's see if we can do the do the tunnel ride here <laughs> I 
Maybe not today. Let's see if we can continue without hitting our head. A little tricky. Especially when it does ease. <laughs> oh, that's going to be tough. You gotta crouch down so don't hit your head like I just did. <laughs> oh, that's tight. I'm gonna have to check out the helmet. I think I rubbed a little paint off. <laughs> I've never done that. All these years of riding, I've never ridden through those tunnels. <laughs> so, we're gonna head back exactly the way we came in follow the little paved road to the gate at the end and then hook a right and we'll be back at the parking lot fat bike tires man sound like you're rolling super swampers on a truck when you're on the uh, asphalt <laughs> the bike moves surprisingly easily everybody thinks it's slow no cross-country bike but it's definitely not slow or hard to pedal looks like there's only a couple riders out here today during the summer I'll probably be the only guy out here that's dumb enough to ride at 110 but I'm used to it. So not bad for a short ride. About 50 minutes, five and a half miles. We had a lot of stops and I was doing my review. So it's good for a short ride if you don't have any time. I'm not sure how my review is going to go, but the goal here is to actually map out some of these trails that nobody's been doing and maybe show some people that want to come ride here what it's about. So until next time, 